All right, so in this video, I'm going to try to explain a little bit more about what we were talking about today in terms of bipolar cells, and we're going to talk a little bit about receptive fields and cortical organization just to help you guys understand why we have bipolar cells, like why they're necessary for visual transduction. But what I want to start out with is the fact that our visual cortex has what we've talked about as a topic organization. What this means is that the visual cortex is separated out into various zones depending on the information that's going to that zone, specifically place information. So different areas of the visual cortex respond to different neurons in the retina, and they kind of carry this map that tells the retina, or that tells the visual cortex where in the retina the stimulation is occurring. For example, if I was to orient my eye, so use my eye muscles to move my eyeball to face this banana, and the banana stimulated the neurons in this orange region, because the activity occurs in this part of my visual cortex, I would know that that stimulus was in a certain location in my visual field, right? And this isn't, this isn't as correct as it could be, and don't really focus on this stuff too much, just because it's not very... Um, detailed, but just focus on the fact that certain areas in the retina project to certain areas of the visual cortex, and that can inform the visual cortex or inform the conscious mind where in response to the retina that stimulation is occurring, or where in relation to the retina that stimulation is occurring, which tells us about location information. So you can kind of think of it as like your visual cortex has a map of your retina and different areas respond to different places in your retina, which correspond to different areas in your visual field. So we want to talk about the receptive fields. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. More specifically, let's say this banana stimulated this receptive field right here in this orange region. That neuron would project to, again, a very specific region in the cortex. And this is to further help our brains understand this map. But they're, they're a little different in the visual system than they are in, let's say, the somatosensory system. For example, if this is my hand in the somatosensory system, there's one corpuscle or um, capsule-looking thing here, and it stimulates one primary sensory afferent, right? And that's just kind of how it goes. Um, there might be a couple corpuscles or a couple mechanical receptors but the idea is that the peripheral the peripheral sensor cell is is pretty basic it's just pressure or mechanical gating with vision our visual systems are so complex and so well adapted that we have to kind of come up with different ways of organizing our our receptive fields the way this occurs in vision is known as the center surround receptive field. But I want to remind you guys of a really unique feature, a really fundamental feature of receptive fields, being that they contact one primary sensory afferent. Meaning, the retinal ganglion cell in this case, in the case of vision, contacts this entire receptive field. And the way this is organized is that the photoreceptors conjugated to on bipolar cells exist in the middle of the receptive field, and the photoreceptors conjugated to the off bipolar cells exist in the surrounding air, uh, portion of this receptive field. But remember, they all contact one retinal ganglion cell. So the way these are going to transduce information is via the either increase or decreased activity of this retinal ganglion cell. So you're either going to get increased activity or decreased activity as an overall effect of this receptive field. And I'll talk in a sec about how this receptive field produces this effect. But if we were to look at it from a different angle, let's say, you know, I was looking at it as if I was looking at the side of it here, we can see that the photoreceptor cells in this case, they're all identical, right? And these could be cones or rods, it doesn't really matter. But what's important about that is it's, it's the bipolar cells that are causing the difference in signaling, right? They're causing, it's, it's very similar to the idea that the receptor is what mediates the effect of the ligand. In this way, it's actually the bipolar cell that mediates the effect of the photoreceptor cell 
on the retinal ganglion cell. So the photoreceptor cell is going to be very simple, very um, easy to follow, whereas the bipolar cells are going to create this more unique difference. But again, it's very important to understand that it's all going to converge on one retinal ganglion cell, as is the definition of one receptive field. So remember, the retinal ganglion cell in this case is the primary sensory afferent. So I know some of the circuitry can get really complicated, and it, I mean, you can even see us fumbling through it. And so I think what I usually do, and what helps me a lot, is to, I created these three fundamental rules of retinal circuitry that I follow. And I'll tell you why these are important in a sec, but rule number one is that photoreceptor cells are hyperpolarized by light. And that's due to that um, transducin signaling pathway that we talked about. But just remember that photoreceptor cells are hyperpolarized by light. I can talk about that pathway in another video. The effect of that is that in light, they release less glutamate. So this is one thing to remember. Two, on bipolar cells, I'll write that out for you, on bipolar cells are going to be active, so I'll draw this in green, are going to be active in light. And that's pretty fundamental, right? In light, so if the light is on, the, bipo the on bipolar cell is going to be active. And off bipolar cells these are going to be decreased activity in light so one another way I could say this which might make more sense is their increased activity in dark right and it's easy to get confused with all the signal flipping and transduction pathways, but this is a very fundamental idea that on bipolar cells are active in the light and off bipolar cells are active in the dark. Using these three fundamental rules of neuro or retinal circuitry, you can reason through everything else. You can reason through the effect of glutamate on the bipolar cells. You can reason through everything. So always keep these three things in mind. If you get lost trying to understand the circuitry, go back to these rules and you should be able to get there. Remember that on bipolar cells hyperpolarize in response to glutamate. In response to glutamate. And off bipolar cells depolarize in response to glutamate. And off bipolar cells, they just use a regular amperoceptor, right? So this is just a glutamate-gated um, amperoceptor, passes in positive current. So when there's more glutamate, there's more activity of the off bipolar cells. It's pretty simple, not much going on there. On bipolar cells contain, I want to say it's M, glu, R, something. And what this means is this is an inhibitory GPCR, meaning more glutamate equals less activity. Right, and well, I'll kind of show you how that manifests in a sec. But remember, these are these three rules here. These are going to be your fundamental rules of retinal circuitry. So if you ever find yourself getting lost, go back to those three rules. So here's again our center surround um, receptive field organization. Very simplistic drawing. Obviously, there's going to be more off bipolar cells and more on bipolar cells conjugated to photoreceptor cells. But just this is how we're going to display it. And it's important to note that photoreceptor cells usually only contact one bipolar cell. And that figure we show in class can be a little confusing because it looks like it does both, but it's just trying to show that it has two different effects on bipolar cells. But remember that they're always conjugated to one bipolar cell. And again, these three photoreceptor cells that we're talking about here, they're identical. There's nothing, there's no difference between any of them. It's all, all the difference is gonna come in the off bipolar cells and on bipolar cell organization. So just to the left over here is kind of a uh, um, way I'm going to show light dark, more activity and less activity. So first I'm going to say we've got light here, 
What's going to happen? Well, go back to fundamental rule number one. Light hyperpolarizes a photoreceptor cell, so it's going to release less glutamate. And I'm going to draw our glutamate in blue. So that's just a little bit of glutamate. <laughs> so our off bipolar cell, it just responds, remember, it just responds to depolarize and responds to glutamate. So if there's less glutamate, there's going to be less activity, right? So I'm going to say that. It's less activity. Or, yeah, I'm going to say less activity there. Now we take the light and we shine it on our photoreceptor cell that's conjugated to an on bipolar cell. It's releasing the same amount of glutamate. However, let me draw it coming from the flashlight here. However, because glutamate inhibits on bipolar cells, less glutamate actually increases the activity of on. And I can draw a little flowchart here for that. So. Here's a photoreceptor cell, or here's glutamate. I'm going to draw it like this. Here's glutamate. It inhibits on bipolar cells. However, light inhibits or decreases the amount of release. So this is light of glutamate, thereby increasing the activity of an on bipolar cell, right? This is a disinhibition of an on bipolar cell. So by decreasing the amount of inhibition, you're increasing the activity of the on bipolar cell, right? So what's going to happen is this on bipolar cell is actually going to be happy. And we know that if we go back to our fundamental rule, you can reason through that by knowing that in light, your on bipolar cell is going to be happy. So we know that in response to less glutamate, if the on is happy, we know that the on is inhibited by glutamate. I know it's a mouthful, but if we just keep going, we'll figure it out. So, oops. All right. Now we're going to talk about what happens in the dark, right? And what what do you expect is going to happen with this off bipolar cell in the dark, right? We're getting more glutamate release. Is an off bipolar cell going to be happier or, or is it going to be more activity or less activity in the dark? Well, as per the name suggests, it's going to be more, it's going to have a higher rate of activity in the dark. Whereas the on bipolar cell, if it's in the dark, more glutamates out here. Again, we say that glutamate inhibits on bipolar cells, right? So what's going to happen is you're going to have less activity of your on bipolar cell. I hope that makes sense. Remember, always go back to your three fundamental rules. But... I want to talk about why this is important. And the way we'll do that is with these receptive fields. So let's say I light up this entire receptive field. All of it's lit up. The on bipolar cells, the on bipolar cells, they're going to be happy because they're in light. The off bipolar cells, they're going to be unhappy because they're in the dark. So what you're going to get is this relatively um, large amount of activity, right? Because your on bipolar cells are happy. So you're going to get a, a certain amount of activity. In uniform darkness, which is the entire thing is, is dark, your on bipolar cells are going to be unhappy, right? Because they're in the dark, they don't like that. But your off bipolar cells are actually going to be more happy. And this is also going to be a relatively high amount of activity. However, I should note that this is always going to be more activity, right? So uniform light is always going to be more activity than uniform dark. And that's just the way our, our receptive fields encode differences in hue, right? Well, let's say, for example, that I shine light very specifically just in this on center, but then I cover the surround in, in dark. And this, so this off surround is bathed in dark. This is going to be the case where I get the most activity because both your on and your off bipolar cells are in their preferred environment, right? So they're both going to be happy. You're going to get the most amount of activity. For, let's say, the opposite is true. Let's say... Everyone's unhappy here. So because of this, you're going to get unhappy on and off bipolar cells. Right? So this is going to be a really low amount of activity. So, and I'll cover this diagram in the next video. So I'll make a second part of this.